Facts are supposed to be true, rigid, something to abide by. However, the facts presented are interpreted through a flimsy human perception. We of course are setting up rules and scientific methods to try to minimize the emotional flaw. However, boiling down to the day-to-day -day conversation, there's always bound to be flakes. Any number of topics with varying levels of political stickiness could be acknowledged with understanding of these facts. But I figure I use it to talk about something near to dear to my heart, dinosaurs and other paleo animals. Right off the bat, there's interpretation because all we have to go off is literally fossilized remains. Just the colors of any of these animals post Ice Age is a complete mystery, with the exception of some preserved feathered pigmentation of bird-like animals being black, reddish-brown, and woodpecker colors. However, utilizing the best of our knowledge in modern day references, we could have a good idea of how some of these animals looked and behaved, and take some creative liberties as long as they aren't too extreme. Now a subject of particular interest is that of dinosaur feathers. The very name dinosaur means terrible lizard, with a lot of their names ending with the saurus suffix. From their very conception, the reptilian aspect has been emphasized, conceptualized as these giant prehistoric dragons. However, some discoveries, specifically from the theropod sector, shows a very strong relation to avian counterpart, showing real legitimate evidence that these dinosaurs may have had feathers. Now, the reason why they had them is pretty damn simple attract females and to show how much of a boss you are with all them fancy ass colors. No Lemino, it's not just sexual dimorphism, that could easily be done with scales, big picture, it's heat regulation. Same basic idea with hair, and really a good metric to go by for which dinosaurs had feathers is understanding how big it is. These days we have animals like elephants, large mammals which are for the most part hairless. But of course we understand that their counterparts, like the woolly mammoth, would have been very full of hair due to living during a much snowier time. So there you go. Just see what kind of dinosaurs in the family of feathers, and judging from evidence of their environment, how their counterparts would do. We know a close relative to Tyrannosaurus rex, the 30-foot Utai Tyrannus, was a very feverly fellow. However, we also have evidence that they lived in a relatively cold environment, pushing for an advocacy for them. So it's still up in the air whether our 40-foot Tyrannosaurus rex would have had feathers. Now regardless of the feather discussion, there's a clash with the cinematic interpretations, with a lot of them still going with a more lizard-like look. In all intents and purposes, movies aren't expected to have an adherence to the source. However, with the consideration that part of a cool factor is dinosaurs once lived, it would be only fair for what's on screen to be somewhat representative of what was once. Of course, some still cling on for whole scaly look, to be sort of a cool look we don't want to let go of. I have a powerful, potent, rage-filled disdain for the whole feathered dinosaur concept, and I don't want it anywhere near a potentially awesome new Jurassic Park movie. I don't care if it's scientifically correct, I don't care if it would be educational, I don't care. I like my dinosaurs to look more like badass real-life dragons than they do like a parrot that was raised near Chernobyl. And I recognize how stupid and childish and anti-intellectual that is, absolutely. It's not as though I want to argue with the science, I know better than that. I can accept that the science is probably right, I just, selfishly, yes, want to hold on to the cool version of dinosaurs as long as I can. Now my thoughts on both sides. As far as what looks more visually interesting, I'd go with scale. There's a lot for richness which adds to the fierce. All that said, there's some strong legitimacy for feathers. If you can imagine them sticking up on the back of a raptor, like that with dogs, then there is a new potential level of menace. Coupling that with birds being smarter, I'd say it adds a bit particularly for the raptors, the old clever girl. While I don't really have strong feelings on what kind of portrayals are in the cinematic versions, I ultimately have a preference for the more feathery counterparts, at least for the smaller animals like raptors. Honestly, the sleek design with them makes it hard to imagine it without him. On the topic of cinematic, mainstream interpretations, there's a bigger question of why when talking about prehistoric animals, it's mainly just dinosaurs. When thinking of it, there's been a big expanse of history of animals evolving throughout time. Now, as I'm setting up my hypothetical question, I'm kind of aware of the answer. Dinosaurs were the anomaly. Pre them were some pre basic bitch ancestors, and post them was a barrage of mammals. The point is, most of these animals could be connected to some modern day counterparts. Dinosaurs have a certain amount of distance. It's an entire subgroup of animals that evolved independently from the modern day chain we associate with. Basically, a what if with reinforced evidence to imagined. With reptilian roots 
to at least somewhat tie it to our current biological paradigm. And with some evolving from birds adds an interesting dimension, basically a breathing footprint to show they once exhaled. We could see the resemblance, but there's law of legroom for imagination.